Hey guys, I'm here today to talk about two readathons that are taking place in the month of April. Now I hardly ever do readathons or TBR videos because I've realised that they just don't work for me usually because as soon as I have a um, sort of strict list I then don't want to read those books so it's really counterproductive. However, you may have noticed, I've discussed it quite a lot on the channel, that I haven't been reading a lot for the past sort of six months and I think initially that started out because I just sort of fell out of the love of reading because of life stuff and then I think the past couple of months it's more because I'm just not used to reading as much as I used to so it's sort of like needing to form the habit again. I think with any habit if you get out of it for a few months you have to sort of get yourself back in it, it's like habit making. So I've noticed the last few days I've been doing a buddy read of the Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver which is quite a chunky book, it's about 600 pages. And how my current reading mood is, if I wasn't buddy reading it, I'd probably only be managing like 20, 30 pages a day, even though I'm really enjoying it. And that's just because I'm not used to sitting and reading for an hour or more suddenly anymore. But because I've been doing the buddy read and been wanting to keep up with the others and to be able to, you know, hear their thoughts um, sort of live rather than being days late, I've been reading it in big chunks and really enjoying it. And so when I heard about both of these reader funds, I thought, you know what, I'm going to join in and try my best and hope that the sort of structure, which is still going to be fairly loose compared to um, how structured some reader funds are, will help me to to really get back into reading and to read. Um, I'd really like to read a lot this month. Um, my usual amount to read was about 12 books a month. I'd like to sort of read more than that just because I really want to sort of wholeheartedly dive back in, but we shall see. Um, and you'll also see with both of these reader funds and some of the books I'm gonna mention here is a lot of these books aren't the type of books I usually read. And that's just because I really want to try and um, find my love of reading for fun and enjoyment again. So what I've decided to do is I've picked a lot of genres that for me are a much quicker reads, um, um, much more pacey, I don't need to think as much, just because I think that's sort of what I need right now. So I have lots of fun books here, um, which I'm really, really looking forward to. I've just been to the library and got some out and then I treated myself to a couple. And some of these books are books that I'd usually never read and maybe I really won't enjoy, but you know, I'm going to take a risk this month. So the first read of fun I want to talk about is the book buddy of fun and that runs to, from the 9th to the 5th, the 9th to the 15th of April and it's hosted by Eleanor from Eleanor Reads Books and Janet from Swirly Girl Reads and you may have heard of this one, it's run quite a few times, basically you choose a reading buddy and there's five prompts throughout the week and one of those prompts is to buddy read a book together but then the other four books you're just supposed to sort of cheer each other on and you know keep in touch about how your reading's going and you don't have to fulfill all five prompts at all, it's a really casual readathon but I'm hoping to. So the five prompts this time, actually before I tell you that I should probably tell you who I'm doing it with. So um, my buddy this time round is Lauren from Lauren and the Books and we've never done this before together um, which is a bit of a surprise because we tend to um, talk quite a lot because we do the podcast and we get on. So yeah we're gonna buddy read together for the week and hopefully um, have lots and lots of fun and spare each other on so fingers crossed. So the book we're gonna buddy read together, um, I watched Lauren's April TBR and just found the book that she was already planning on reading that I also had and wanted to read um, and that was The Gloaming by Kirsty Logan. So this is a new release, it may not even be out yet um, because they've sent me this lovely um, copy in advance which is very kind of them. And you guys have probably heard of The Gracekeepers by Kirsty Logan which came out a couple of years ago. This is set in the same sort of fantastical world where most of the world is flooded and the majority of people live on ships. And yeah, this is with a new set of characters but in the same world. I think the world could really have lots more exploration in it, to be honest. It felt like a world that it would be a shame if it was just created for one novel. And um, so I'm intrigued to see if we learn more and intrigued to see what sort of characters we have in this world. And I found The Grace Keepers um, a really fast paced read for me. I found it quite easy to get through. So I think this could be a really good choice for a readathon. So there is that one. Then the next prompt is Friendship. Now this really worked for me because Ange and I from Beyond the Pages agreed to read this book together in April a while ago and this whole book is centred around friendship um, and that is Crossing to Safety by Wallace Stegner. Now this is probably um, one of the less 
um, non-me reads of the month. This is quite typical of me to read this sort of book, although I really haven't read um, modern classics for a while and I'm really missing it. I've been reading loads of new releases, um, so I'm really looking forward to this one. And Anne recently mentioned this in her April TBR and she said exactly what I was thinking and that this really makes me think of Richard Yates and Revolutionary Road. So I'm thinking it may have that sort of vibe. Um, it's set during the Great Depression and it follows two couples who become friends and then their lives together um, and all the things that go on throughout their relationships and their friendships with one another. Um, and I've heard amazing things about this book so I'm not really sure um, what the writing style is like but yeah I'm really hoping to enjoy this one and I think it'll be a really great book to buddy read so there's that one. I've got a little list down here hence why I keep looking down. So the next prompt is adventure. Now usually I'd struggle with this prompt because I don't tend to read a ton of fantasy. I barely read any sci-fi, maybe one a year. Um, I don't tend to read sort of road trip novels or anything like that but because I'm trying to get back into reading with some sort of funner books I've bought myself and got from the library quite a few books which would easily fill this category. So there's loads I could show you to be honest but I'm going to show you three that I'm thinking are the most likely. So firstly we have Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. I've wanted this for ages but it's not actually published in the UK I don't think. So my library don't have it and I just happened to pop in Waterstones and they just got it in stock um, and the bookseller saw me pick it up and he said you know we've had to order it um, from the US and I think she's now going to start getting a UK publisher for a lot of her books um, or for a lot of this series and um, the Akata Witch series. So yeah I was really happy to see it there and decided to pick this one up. I think this is like an epic space adventure with the main character going to university. And it's tiny, so if I'm struggling <laughs> with the readathon, um, this will be the one I reach for. But I'm definitely going to read this one ASAP because there's no point leaving a book that's this little sitting around for very long. Then I also picked up Autonomous by Anna Lee Newitz. Now, this was a recent sci fi release, I think last year, and I had no idea that it had been picked up by a UK publisher. And I was, it was one of those ones I was really intrigued by because I really like the use of artificial intelligence in science fiction books or I like the idea of it because as I said I barely read them but I was worried this would be too like thrillery, too fast paced for me because this is sort of like a chase so basically it says Jack is an anti-patent scientist turned drug pirate fabricating cheap medicines for those who can't otherwise afford them but her latest drug hack has left a trail of lethal overdoses so on her town she has a deadly military agent and his indentured robotic partner and it follows the three of them on this sort of ch epic chase which does not sound like my usual thing however I do really like um, the use of artificial intelligence as I said and I'm really trying to read more science fiction and fantasy particularly um, by female authors so I'm, I'm hoping this one will work for me so we shall see and then I also picked up and this is completely dropped it this is completely different to what I usually read, so I got this one from the library. So because I, like I said, um, been struggling with, with getting through books, I decided to give sort of YA in general another go. Shock horror, I know. Now I feel like I'm never really going to enjoy contemporary YA, but I feel like I could maybe enjoy like a fantasy YA. So I got a few from the library. I could hate them but I feel like I should give them a chance. I don't know if I've ever read any fantasy YA since being an adult and um, I tried a few contemporaries and really didn't like them. So yeah I may not enjoy them but I thought I'd give this one a go and I think this one is sort of on the borderline and um, some people say this is YA, some people say this is adult and um, it's about a 19 year old character so it's sort of on the borderline um, and this is The Queen of the Tearling by Erica Johansson and if I do really love this then they've got I think the next two or however many there are at the library um, and it could be a really sort of addictive page turner so we shall see and that sounds quite adventurous as well so there's that one. And then the next prompt is fun. Now I just treated myself to this because I've heard so many people rave about it and that is Nevermore The Trials of Mo Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. And this is a new middle grade book. The bookseller just told me it's the first of nine. I had no idea it was gonna be a series of nine and I've, like I said, heard so many positive things about this. And the way people have described certain scenes, it just instantly made me wanna um, read this book. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna pick this one for the fun category. And then the last one is new and that can be um, a new release, uh, a new book to you, a new author to you. Um, so this is a new to me author, um, this isn't a new release, however these are um, newly reissued 
in the last year or so. So this is Forney Hold by Mary Stewart. Now I've heard so many of my favourite booktubers raving about Mary Stewart recently um, and lots of people buddy reading her works and I keep thinking oh I really want to um, pick up some of her books and join in and out of all of her books this was the one that I'd added to my um, to buy list. One because the cover's beautiful and two because I really like the sound of it because it's about a rambling house called Forney Hold which is something out of a fairy tale um, and I think this has got like it may have like a witch in it. I don't know if that's fantastical or more like a, a herbal lady. I don't really know. Um, but I just thought it sounded delightful. So when I heard um, that there was a buddy read of this going on in April, I decided to join in. So I ordered this one, it just arrived. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping to really enjoy this book and then to read all of our other books in these beautiful editions. So there's that. So that is the book Buddyathon, which as I said, is from the 9th to the 15th of April. Now this other one I also heard about on Eleanor's channel and um, because I saw her do a TBR for it which I'll, I'll link up here somewhere and I just thought it sounded wonderful. Um, so this is the Ordinary Wizarding Levels TBR. So um, it's uh, from the channel The Book Roast, she created it and I'll link the video um, where she talks about it more up here. I, I'd never heard of her channel and we read completely different things but I really enjoy her videos and um, she's obsessed with Harry Potter so it's always lovely to hear her talk about um, all Harry Potter related things. This sounds like such a fun readathon. So she's going to explain it way better than I will but the basic premise is that it runs from the 2nd of April to the 29th of April and you're using the month to study for your OWLs which is the wizarding exams at Hogwarts and there are 12 subjects you can study and in order to get a pass grade, I think in order to get a pass grade, you need to obtain five owls. So you need to pick five of the subjects and read five books to hit those prompts. You can't overlap, so you can't read four books and use them for five prompts. But in general, trying to read five books in a month is quite um, obtainable compared to lots of reader fonts that exist on booktube. So I think it sounds like quite a nice one. And one thing that I love the sound of is that you're advised to not just pick the subjects based on the prompts you like, but to pick subjects based on the subjects you would actually want to study were you at Hogwarts. You can also try and get more specific by choosing subjects that will lead you to the career path you would like if you were a witch or wizard, because eventually there will be um, another reader fund which is based on the newts, which is the next level of wizarding exams at Hogwarts. And if you read the Harry Potter books, you will remember that you cannot study for a newt in a subject unless you have the owl in a subject, which is quite similar to the way um, education in general works, or at least it's how it worked for me. I couldn't get an A level in a subject if I didn't have a GCSE in a subject, so it's very similar. So. Obviously you only have to choose five but because I am trying to read a lot this month and I love loads of the prompts I would love to manage all 12. Now I can obviously overlap the books from the book buddy a so it doesn't mean I have to read 17 books it means I just have to read 12 but yeah I don't know I don't know if I'll be able to manage all these but I'd like to manage as many as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell you any of the books I'm considering because I've got a big old list of like three options for each to keep it open for myself but what I'm going to do instead is tell you the subjects and the relevant prompts and then maybe mention the ones that I you know if I had to choose five the five subject, subjects I would choose. Okay so first we have Ancient Ruins which is a book with a symbol on the cover. Now this is one of the ones I found more difficult because I realised I don't have many books with symbols on the cover. So I've managed to find three. Now I do want to ask you about one of these because I think I'm cheating slightly and I want to know whether you guys think this is a cheat or not. So I have two books that 100% have symbols on the cover and this is the third and this is the one I want to read the most and I don't know whether this will be classed as a symbol but I'm trying to bend the rules. So this is Red Clocks by Lenny Zumas. Now I think that is sort of a symbol because it symbolises a vagina. Do I get away with that or does it have to be a literal like symbol sort of thing? So what do you guys think? The other two books I have do have actual symbols on. Let me know what you think. Then the next one is Arithmacy, which is a book with a number on the cover. Again, I found this one slightly harder. Um, and I'm trying not to cheat and just choose um, series that have like a number on the spine. So, but yeah, that's another one. Then we have Astronomy, which is science fiction, which at the moment I find really easy because I've bought lots of science fiction and got lots out of the library. 
Care of Magical Creatures is a book with magical creatures in it or on the cover and um, this is a really easy one for me I have loads of books about magical creatures and then also loads of books with magical creatures on the cover I think loads of people will love that prompt Charms is fantasy again that's a nice one I think lots of people will really enjoy that prompt Defence Against the Dark Arts I find harder um, it's a book that features secret societies or clubs so yeah I think that one's quite tough I have seen some people using some of the actual Harry Potter books to fulfil the prompts um, and obviously Order of the Phoenix would work really well for this one and I am currently rereading the book so if I get up to that point I will perhaps use um, Order of the Phoenix for that one um, but we shall see. The next prompt I also find quite hard and that's divination so it's to read a book featuring prophecies or a prophecy um, so again feel free to give recommendations if you can think of any down below. Then we have Herbology which is a book that features um, nature or nature related word in the title. I think that one should be relatively easy and um, particularly if you read um, nature non-fiction. I have quite a lot of nature non-fiction on my shelves that I should be reading so um, I've got a lot of choice on that one. History of Magic, Historical Fiction. I adore historical fiction, as do many other people, so that's a really nice one. And Muggle Studies is a non-fiction book. Again, I love non-fiction and I have loads I want to read this month, so that should be nice. Potions is a book about or with alchemy. Um, so again, that one could be pretty tough for me. I think that will tend to be featured more in children's or young adult books. I don't know if it's as um, prevalent in adult books. However, thinking I could use the Goblet of Fire because of Mad Eye Moody. So, yeah, because I'm currently reading the third book, so if I get to the fourth and the fifth, they could count. Transfiguration is a book that features um, transfiguration, shape shifting, or a black cat on the cover. I was appalled when I looked through my bookshelves and realised out of about well, nearly 200 books, I didn't feature a single own, a single book with a black cat on the cover, and then I just found one one out of all of the books I own. It's quite shocking. Loads of books with foxes on, like an obscene amount, but none with a black cat other than one I eventually found. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I've really breezed through those. Apologies if I've just spoken really fast. I'm gonna link all the stuff you need to know down below about both of these reader funds. So, if I had to choose five, then I think I would choose ones that possibly sound like the least magical. Um, so I would choose, 100% choose Care of Magical Creatures because I freaking love animals and my degree was in wildlife conservation so I'd choose that. I'd 100% choose Herbology because again um, I love stuff about the natural world so I would definitely have chosen that as a subject. I'd have chosen History of Magic, I know it has a boring teacher but I adore history um, so I would have definitely wanted to have that. Um, I'd have chosen Muggle Studies, I really enjoy um, considering um, like sociology and um, the way we work as a society and also you know I think it would be really interesting to look at the interplay between the magical and non-magical world and then if I had to choose a fifth I feel like charms are super useful so I choose charms now my subjects I would least want to do is potions I feel like potions is quite like chemistry not into that defense against the dark arts I know loads of people are going to choose that I'm a massive pansy I don't like physical fights um, I get scared if someone who looks a bit dodgy is walking the same side of the road as me so I wouldn't choose that and I definitely wouldn't choose um, divination because I don't believe in all that stuff so yeah but those are the ones, those are the five that I feel like would be the most likely ones I would choose. But as I said, it would be really cool to manage all 12. We shall see if I can manage it. So yeah, do let me know if you are participating in either of these reader fonds. Um, and let me know if you have any ideas for any of the prompts I mentioned. Um, or just anything you'd like to say down below. I would really like recommendations for science fiction or fantasy that has really good characters, good representation of women because freaking it's my pet peeve. Science fiction and fantasies has really poor representation so preferably written by a woman because I feel like they do it better but if a bloke's written it and he's done, he's done well then I'm okay with that. And I'd also be willing to consider some um, young adult books that are more fantasy focused that have not too much angsty romance because that's what really like pushes me away. Um, so lots of the big hitters that people are going to mention, I'm not going to want to read. Um, so perhaps try and let me know ones that you think I'm less likely to have heard of um, and more likely to enjoy. So yeah, I'd love all those recommendations. 
thanks for watching and hopefully you'll see a bit more of me and I might do a like a mid month update um, of how I'm doing so do let me know if you'd be interested in seeing that thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye